Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this absolutely gorgeous. It is a Friday afternoon, which I think is, what is it, September 9th. 2022 so it being Friday it is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup ramp where uh, I check in with my old buddies at mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there at Manga Bay for their weekly cavalcade of uh, you know, of catastrophe mixed with just pointless hopium. And guys, it has finally happened. I love it. You know, uh, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel uh, where you can, and so each week they pick an issue uh, to discuss in their YouTube video. So this week, it finally happened. So one of their irregular programs they do on Manga Bay is this hilarious uh, piece of, uh, you know, apocalyptic hopium called Problem Solved. Problem Solved, you know, where they introduce whatever the insurmountable, unsolvable problem is. And, and start throwing out these little uh, bright green lie platitudes and whatnot about how we're going to solve this issue or that one. So it has finally happened that the proud father, Rhett Butler, how old is Rhett's kid? I think Rhett just has one kid, although I don't know, he might have ten by now. Last I heard when uh, when I interviewed Rhett Butler, he had just had his first child at age 42, uh, which I have to admit left me speechless. So I love uh, the uh, <laughs> I love the screenshot for this. Will having fewer kids save the climate? Problem solved. There you go. Having fewer kids will save the climate. Problem solved. Well, of course, guys, there's two problems with that issue is that the climate is one issue that is not going to be solved. Or it really does make it, it makes no difference uh, how many kids. As far as the climate is concerned, uh, the number of kids being born from this point forward, it's, uh, of, of all of the planetary tipping points, the number of humans is more irrelevant to the climate crisis uh, than, uh, than any other planetary boundary, tipping point, whatever you want to call it. So I guess the answer will having fewer kids save the climate, I agree because the ultimate uh, answer to the question, you know, is this cop-out thing that this is everybody's choice. It, it is an individual choice. Uh, it is according to your own reality that, the, you know, it's a free country, supposedly a free planet, uh, so if you want to have kids, have kids. If you don't want to have kids, don't have kids. <clears throat> but if you're not having kids to save the climate, which is kind of not that far from saving the planet, uh, they're, they're claiming, you, you know, they're throwing in their what did they actually try to suggest that the fashion industry, the fashion industry was as much of a threat to the climate and the planet uh, as the, uh, 
as how many people are on the planet. Okay, so but here is the you know the the adjoining article leading you into the YouTube video. Is having fewer kids the answer to the climate question? Problem solved. Okay. The human population is expected to reach not 8 billion literally any day now, and nearly 10 billion people sometime in this century, with the planet also swiftly approaching 1.5 C Celsius of warming above pre-industrial levels, if you want to believe that bright green lie, activists and scientists are urging any solution to keep temperatures from shooting higher into the danger zone. Research suggests that the single biggest thing anyone can do to reduce their impact on the environment and the climate is to choose to have one less child. Well, if it's one less than one, I agree with that. Uh, but that simple solution is complicated by thorny economic, ethical, social, and political issues. On this episode of Problem Solved, we unpack the research and examine this sensitive and controversial question. Is choosing collectively, you know, as a, as a species, as a planet, as a civilization, uh, is choosing collectively to have fewer children really a viable solution to our climate change and or our resource overuse crises? And then they go into this 18-minute descent into bright green lie, apocalyptic, hopium uh, bullshit. Just absolute bullshit where Manga Bay is sounding a whole lot like, it, it's not red, it's, it's some little, uh, one of these little lefty guys, uh, don't know, I don't care what his name is. Uh, you know, spouting all of this crap. The bright green overpopulation denial crap. Unadulterated horseshit. 18 minutes of unadulterated horseshit with uh, Manga Bay and, of course, Rhett Butler putting his stamp of approval. I am genuinely embarrassed for Manga Bay and Rhett Butler. This, this is the single most embarrassing low point in Manga Bay's 20 year something history. Uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one step away, I and mean, I'm sure Rhett would be happy at this point uh, th 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 just to stop doing these roundups. So you know, you, you've heard all of this crap before. And before we go into the rest of the rant, uh, let's see, there was this fellow calling himself Humpty Dumpty, who, uh, this was Humpty Dumpty's comment, uh, you know, answering the question, will having fewer children help save the climate. Whoever this Humpty Dumpty guy is, uh, having zero kids is the only solution to saving the lives of future generations of every species of earthling on the planet. With the possible exception of one species. This is basic third grade math. There is nothing complicated about it. It is, in fact, the single simplest solution to saving the planet, pure and 
simple. There is no gray area here. And what I would have added if I was Humpty Dumpty, the only thing I would have added to this comment, well, I, I could have gone on for hours, but the only thing that I would have added here is someone who is never born has an environmental, ecological carbon footprint of exactly zero. Zero. Someone who is never born will have zero effect on the future of the planet. P.S. This Humpty Dumpty guy says, I got a vasectomy at age 22 before letting any little planet-eating bundles of joy out of the bag just in case any of you guilty breeders were wondering whether I walk my talk. And so anyway, I am not suggesting you go listen to this bullshit video. I do need to give it for the first time ever. We need to dislike this video. So what we're going to, we're going to do something a little bit different. So you know all of the, the crap you're going to hear in this. Uh, all of these uh, empowering women, flying less, uh, uh, becoming a vegan, all, uh, all of this crap that they're trying to pretend like uh, that, that these guilty breeders bashing their heads in to rationalize their excuse to inflict uh, the single biggest uh, hammer blow against this planet that can be inflicted. You take the, the, top, the, you know, the next 10 items on the list, add them up together. They do not hold a candle to, uh, to this. So what we're going to do for the rest of this rant, uh, we're simply, I, I, I'm, we're, we're going to read the headline of the story. So we're going to go down the list of stories from all over the planet chronicling the collapse of a planet and ask ourselves, would empowering women solve this problem? Would going, you know, somebody in Ithaca, New York, turning into a vegan, would that solve this problem? Uh, would somebody in London flying less solve this problem? You, you know what I'm saying. Oh, so we're going to go through all their solutions, and you ask the question, would any of their solutions solve the problem or would making ah, Sancho, Sancho, turn it, come here, Sancho, you turn, don't you do it, no sir. Oh well, somebody is here, so I need to. Uh, I'm glad Sancho did that. 